The Fujifilm X-H2S is a superb hybrid camera for both video and stills. But the most intriguing features come from the video side of this camera. Now, if you've been following this channel for a while, you know I talk very highly of the Fujifilm X-H2S. But there are some particular issues with this camera that make it difficult to use it on set. Now, you might say to yourself, why would I even use this camera on set in the first place? And why did I choose this over the 6K Pro or any other camera out on the market right now? I know, a lot of questions. But before we jump into this video, I just want to say hi and welcome to Cine Dailies. If you're new, this is where I talk about the filmmaking process, building rigs, and reviewing gear. So if that's interesting to you, make sure to hit that subscribe button and drop a like. I would greatly appreciate it. Okay, so I can sit here and talk about all the things that this camera doesn't have, but rather focusing on what it could have been that Fuji should have done, I'm going to focus on the strengths of the camera and the weaknesses when trying to use this on a professional set. I have used the X-H2S on two productions, one for $15,000 and the other for $8,000. One was a Kickstarter and the other one is a commercial, small commercial that is. And as I express these main factors why I chose this camera, just remember that this can be applied to any camera out in the market. We were filming a commercial for a startup company created by two high schoolers, Connor and Nash. They are developing STEM kits that are more accessible for young kids to further their STEM education. So my role was the producer, director, and director of photography. For the Kickstarter for Clever Supply Co., I was the cinematographer. The scope of these two budgets and the projects needed quick setups and simple rigs based on the scripts and the shot list. I used Frameset to pull commercial references to help communicate my vision. Frameset is a very helpful platform for this exact reason. Now you might have heard of Shot Deck, which has a ton of movie references, but one thing that it lacks is commercial spaces. This is where Frameset really shines and also has a ton of music video references as well. So if you're interested, make sure to click in the link in my description to check it out. Now, once I collected all my references, I threw them into Studio Binder and Milanote and started creating the boards, but also in Studio Binder, I created the script, the call sheet and everything else in between. Doing all the pre-production allowed me to see where the money should actually go. So crew, location, props, crafty was my top priority. And since these are much smaller projects on both ends, the risk wasn't in the camera. The risk was in how the final product will look once delivered. Now both projects we ran two X-H2S's which allowed an A camera and a B cam. Uh, we used it on a POV rig for the Kickstarter. Um, on this recent one for the commercial, we did it on a dolly rig. And this really cool shot was a lunch tray rig. I knew the system and owning your camera has its benefits. You can learn all the positives about the camera and all the negatives about the camera and see where the limitations are. Now the X-H2S's image is on the same level of any hybrid camera on the market right now or better. OpenGate gives us the flexibility in post for recomposing. Internal ProRes which we shot in 422HQ and 422FLog2 which has amazing dynamic range. The X mount is very flexible. We use some native lenses but also mainly the PL mounted lens from the wooden camera cage system. Um, and we use the DZO film lenses which you can actually watch this video here and my review of the lenses as well. And then lastly the fast readout speed which helped with the pan transitions. And action. <laughs> now this is not a global shutter but it's very close and so you won't have as much of a jello effect as the 6k pro would have but yeah these are all the reasons why i picked this over my 6k pro or any other camera i thought it was just a better fit for the project and it was the camera i had available with me now let's talk about the first con or pretty much the major con i have with the fujifilm x-h2s and how it's currently laid out for video work and how I kind of consider this a first AC's nightmare to some extent. All right, so the first thing to talk about is the HDMI and how it handles clean out and also when the display is on. When the display is on, um, the quality that's coming out of the camera to the rest of these monitors, it does suffer. It becomes a little bit more mushy, a little bit more pixelated around text. So it actually becomes a little bit more difficult to pull focus when you still want to have information on the screen for the most part. Like we did turn it on and off 
when we start rolling and uh, to make sure we had a clean feed coming out, but we're not realizing that having display HDMI info on, it does degrade the image coming out. On the flip side, like I was actually just testing, you can get a clean feed in a much higher resolution coming out of here, which is like, I believe the full 1080p coming out to these monitors when you have the display, HDMI display off. And um, it's, it looks great. The details there, you can actually see crisper text. You can see the distinction between, you know, contrast and all that stuff. It looks great. The downside of having just a clean output is that you have no indication if the camera is rolling other than if you're on the operator side with the flip out screen flipping out towards you. When you did turn off the HDMI display and you got a clean out feed, both these monitors displayed a black line going down the middle other than the 13 inch Cine. Us not knowing that at the time on set, we thought there was something going on. So we decided to switch it back to display on and kind of just live with it being a much difficult time checking focus so we were constantly you know measuring the distance making sure our lenses we were stopped down as well we we're stopped down at t4 t5.6 so we're you know doing everything we can to make sure the image was um, in focus so that doesn't instill the most confidence if you're a first ac now that i know you want the clean feed out and just double check if you're recording but my suggestion would be if fuji if you're watching is that um on the clean feed that is much more preferred but give us the options to see information um, outside of it. So for instance, Ari does this, Red does this, the higher end cameras do this, where you keep the integrity of the image, still high quality, but you have all the information around the screen in a black border of some sort. That allows you to see the information you need as you know that you're recording, you know the runtime is there and everything. You have that information, but you still have a very clean and sharp image coming out of the camera um, to this. Now, maybe that's a limitation on the HDMI. I don't know what the HDMI output is to do all of that. Obviously, it is suffering when you have the display option on, um, and then you kind of have to run with that. So that wasn't a great experience when dealing with this. This also ties into the display information when the HDMI is plugged into an external monitor. You have to have the flip out screen out in order to turn on and off the display information on all connected monitors. Man, that was a mouthful. If the flip out screen is closed and you had the HDMI connected to an external monitor and you try to press the display on and off, you get this. All this does is downscale and upscale the image, but still keeps all the information on there. Now, I did have the flip out screen open, so it wasn't a huge issue because I was using the fan unit attached to the camera because I knew the camera would be on for hours out of the day, and I didn't want it to overheat. Now, I'm not saying this camera has an overheat issue, not at all. The only time I got this camera to overheat was last year in the summer, and it was 105 degrees filming outside. And I didn't even know about the heat setting in the camera. So no, this has no issue of overheating. I just did it as a precaution because I didn't know how it would handle being connected to all these things and being on all day. I could see an issue having the screen out for long periods of time on a set. Um, somebody can actually come across it and snap it off pretty easily because you can't close it into its own body because of the fan situation. So you get what I'm trying to say. Is this not a great combination of having to use this and, and having a potential issue to damage the LCD screen or have the camera overheat? So it's like pick your poison in a way. But overall, you just got to stay careful. The other thing I was actually wishing that I had control of is um, full customization of the buttons within the custom pages on this camera. Here's what I mean. When we want to do playback, Edward's on this side, he has to press the play button, and I'm on this side, and I have to navigate. And that's just a silly way of doing things, I think. If I was able to remap the play button and everything on one side, so I had to reach over, or Edward has to reach over to playback and whatnot, it just made everything a little bit more complicated. And plus, since it is a small camera, these buttons are small. So give me the option to remap all of my buttons within a custom page and save it to that custom page. And that just gives me much more flexibility. So for my production custom mode or custom page, I'll have everything mapped to this side of the camera and I can have my play button and everything. And then if I do my YouTube setup, it doesn't matter. I can go back to the default settings. So that was just, that would be a little bit more quality of life option. Just give me more options for customization. 
But I think the biggest thing is actually just a better, figure out a better way to get a cleaner feed and still have information on here. Because if the if the display info was on here, it's just so cluttered and it's just not pretty, it's not a good image. It's just, it's just a hassle. Now, I totally get it. This is a hybrid camera and these are just hopefully suggestions for the future. I really enjoy using this camera. The image is great. Having 6.2 open gate is great. Internal ProRes, like all these things, like I mentioned before, are fantastic. I really enjoy using this camera. Just a small wish list. Um, instead of a red dot when recording on screen, can it be a red box? I remember seeing the X-T5 having that. I would love to see that in the flagship camera here. Um, again, more customization for the layout, more customization for the buttons, and sure, exposure tools, but I'm using external monitors, but I know a lot of running gun filmmakers who are using this would like to have waveform, all these different things that, you know, comparably to the Panasonic line, they have that in camera. That would be really nice. Um, of course, you know, shutter angle. I don't, I don't know if that's a, just a software thing. That'd be great. It seems like a software thing. So stuff like that. It's great that we have 48th of a second in here already so we can get the standard 24 frames and have the right frame uh, shutter speed that is. But shutter angle would just make life easier switching between uh, slow, uh, faster frames um, and etc. So yeah, I would love to see these updates come to future software updates. But even better, if there's a chance that Fujifilm will ever make a cinema camera, I believe you all have a blueprint of what's out there for a intermediate or go after the big guns. I think it'll be received really well. This is a fantastic start. It's just the sensor is in the wrong body. <laughs> That's how I feel about this camera overall. That's what I mean. It's like, Fuji, you're very close. You developed a fantastic sensor and it can, it, it can punch above his weight. Um, it's just it's just in the wrong body right now, I believe. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.